how do you describe your work in a way that resonates with your potential clients? What you're going to hear from other marketing experts is that you need to be persuasive. You need to write good marketing copy. You need to be interesting and uh, basically be clever in how you name things and how you describe things so that you can be compelling to your potential clients, etc. Now, those things might be helpful. If you're interested in learning those things, by all means, go ahead and do that and try it out in your marketing. See if it works for you. I think about marketing differently. I don't like to try to be persuasive, try to be convincing, try to be attractive and clever, etc. For me, the way I like to approach marketing, the way I like to teach marketing is to try to be of service. Try to be helpful. Try to be clear. Talk about what people actually experience when they work with you. That is good marketing copy. Okay, so I'll just simplify it for you. How do you describe things that resonate with your ideal clients? How do you describe your, your services and products in a way that resonate with your ideal clients? Talk about the changes people go through when they use your services and products, period. Okay, so that's the overall vision of what to do to describe your work in a way that's interesting. Now, let's talk specifics. I'll give you seven, maybe eight, specific things you might want to talk about in your marketing copy and in your content and also maybe to discuss this in your uh, prospective client conversations as well. Okay. So the first thing is vision. The vision is the overall general what's possible when clients work with you. So this is um, the client's dreams, the client's goals, the client's yearnings, as you work with more people and as you notice how they describe where they want to go in life, the relevant parts that your business can help with, take, note, take notice of, of those descriptions and practice saying them in your own content, in your own marketing, in your own prospective client conversations. So the first one is vision, the general where your ideal clients want to go in the way that you, you, you can help, your business can help with, okay? The second thing is grounding that vision in the results that are likely to happen as people work with you. Now, if you don't have any clients yet, I recommend that you start doing your work with your friends, your family, your colleagues, anybody who is willing to have you do their work with them because you need to get some results. Okay, or maybe it's results from your own life. That's fine too, right? But you need to get some results before you, uh, you don't have to, but it is much more authentic of marketing to get some results or at least some testimonials before you start selling something, okay? So first give it away to your friends or your family, your colleagues, anybody who's willing to try your work. Um, or maybe you've got your own result stories to tell. But the results grounds your vision in a more authentic way of saying, hey, I believe in what I do, right? Okay, so the results is, is the second thing. So you're always, in your marketing, you're always kind of playing this dance between the vision and the results. Because if you only talk about results, you are talking about past experiences, experiences you've already had with clients. When you talk about your vision, you're talking about what's possible, meaning when I do my best work with the client that's perfectly a great match for me, this is what can happen. So you're, you're in your marketing to be authentic, you need to be grounded in both the vision uh, and you need to be um, visionary in the results. So kind of somewhere in that between what's possible and what's likely, talk about that, talk about both, okay? Now, um, the third part of what you want to talk about are the problems that your potential clients are facing along the journey of trying to get to their vision. They want this kind of life. They want this kind of health. They want this kind of relationships. They want this kind of work. Whatever it is you help, your business helps you with, what obstacles are they coming across? What frustrations? What pains are they coming across as they try to get there? Okay? So... Again, as you talk to more clients and prospective clients, notice how they're describing those problems so that you can then mirror that description back in your marketing copy, okay, the problems. Um, fourth is the diagnosis. 
And I want to thank my friend Tad Hargrave for um, you know inspiring me with this idea of diagnosis. His website is marketingforhippies.com. Great guy, has written hundreds of blog posts, super helpful website. Be sure to check it out. His products are great as well, his, his ebooks and his courses. Um, so diagnosis is why are your potential why are your clients and potential clients struggling with those problems? What's the root cause of that? What's the underlying uh, reason for those problems? Those problems are symptoms, in other words, right? Now, what is the diagnosis underneath those symptoms, okay? And the, the reason why this is so powerful is because if your potential client agrees with your diagnosis, then they are much more likely to agree with your process, your modality, um, the, they are more likely to believe that you can actually help them when you can explain to them a why underneath their problems that makes sense, that makes them go, oh, that's no wonder I am going through these challenges. Okay, so why are they dealing with that, right? Because the, the diagnosis, the, the, the roots of those problems is also the roots of your modality. It's also the um, sort of the, the, the framework underneath the thing you, the, the journey you take your clients on. So the diagnosis is related to all that. So the next thing, the fifth thing that we, that you want to talk about in your marketing copy is the process, your modality, your framework, the, here's what I do with clients. I first do this and then I do this and then I do this. Okay. Now this is usually what a lot of, you know, service providers start with. They're like, Oh, let me tell you what I do. I do this. I do this. I do. They start with process. But the person listening to them don't care about the process because they haven't spent years studying the process like you have, right? Or, or they, they don't understand why the process is relevant before they, before they hear from you about the vision and what's, you know, what, what's possible and what's likely in, in, your, in your work with you, in the work with you. What is the problems? Yeah, they can say, oh, yes, I'm dealing with those symptoms, right? And then what's the diagnosis? Oh, that's why I'm dealing with those symptoms. Okay, now I believe you enough to really listen to the process that you're going to tell me that we're going to go through together. Okay, so the process is next. That's number five. Number six is troubleshooting. Okay, now this is more, uh, if, you, if you talk about the troubleshooting in your marketing copy, it can kind of start to get too long. So the troubleshooting is more like what you, what you do in your content. You talk about, okay, if you're dealing with this, try this, okay? The troubleshooting is basically uh, sort of like an FAQ, like, um, oh, is this happening to you? Okay, have you tried this? Okay, oh, that's, what well, you, you've tried this, but this is still going wrong? Well, have you tried this? So troubleshooting is sort of like a, more of a popcorn style, like, okay, you know, yeah, anyway, uh, I think I've, I've explained it in, enough. Um, the next one is passion, okay? The passion section is... Um, where you get to express uh, your excitement for, for, for doing your work and uh, sort of like a greater global vision of what's possible if this work were to succeed, right? So for example, for me, my passion for authentic business is because I imagine a world where every solopreneur is able to express their soul's calling in their business to be able to be financially supported and, you know to support their family as well and if we were to do that the world perhaps the world's problems most of the world's problems would be solved because every problem in the world is calling somebody to solve them and oftentimes calling them to solve it through their work their business right so that's my passion is to bring the idea of authentic business to everybody so that we can actually fulfill our soul's calling in our work through our business, through our authentic business. So the passion is sort of um, uh, kind of ex explaining the movement that you are uh, almost trying to create through your work or, or the movement that you're part of uh, creating through your work. And then finally, number eight, I think is optional, uh, which might surprise you to hear you say this, but credibility. Okay. A lot of marketers, of course, say, you got to say that first or say that early. Like, oh, I've, I've had 10 years of experience doing this and that, and I've, I've served thousands of clients. And 
And that's, that, that certainly can be helpful. And if you feel good about saying that, please do say it. The reason I say it's, it's optional is because some, pe- some of you don't like to toot your own horn. And, and you don't have to. If you go through these seven, seven steps of talking about vision and results and, and, and problems slash symptoms and um, diagnosis and process and troubleshooting and your passion, that by itself is typically more than enough credibility for the person, person listening to you or reading your, your marketing copy to say, wow, I believe you. Uh, and if I'm the right fit, yes, I'd love to work with you. Okay. So the credibility is sort of for those of you who, um, do have a, an important thing to say about it. Like I studied with so-and-so master, <laughs> you know, or I, um, went to this particular training that is well known, or, um, I have, you know, 20 years of experience doing this. It's not like I just started yesterday. So you, you may have certain things about the credibility that are important to mention because it's not apparent on the surface. Um, and, and it is important for you to say that, or I have one certain word or something like that. Okay. So, um, the other thing I want to encourage you to do is, uh, and I'll, 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 I'll quickly name, name this, name the eight things again, vision for what's possible when clients work with you, the results, which ground the vision into like, okay, here's what happened to my recent clients, right? Without naming the clients, you know, talk about the results, um, the, the problems or symptoms of what people experience as they try to change in the way that you help people change, what are the problems? What are the, what's the obstacles that they can't get to their vision because why? Okay. Um, fourth is diagnosis. What's the underlying root of those, of those problems or symptoms? Five is the process, therefore, that you take clients through in order to solve those problems and reach the vision. Six, troubleshooting. Oh, you, 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 you know, as I work with clients, I notice that there's this one thing that keeps coming up. Well, here's, here's something you could try, or there's another thing. Troubleshooting is kind of like a popcorn thing. And then uh, seven is passion. Your passion, why? Your work is part of a movement of changing the world. Okay, and then eight is credibility, any particular important credibility indicators that you ought to name. Now, this work of describing these eight things is not something that you need to perfect. Okay, please let me, let me be clear on that. You're not trying to perfect this, and then finally you can launch your business. Please describe it how you already can describe it, however imperfectly you can describe these eight things or seven things now. Or even if you can't do all seven or eight, just do whatever you can in this lineup, okay? Just start, just talk about whatever you already know in plain language. You don't have to be a marketer. You don't have to be clever or an excellent writer. In plain language, as if you were talking to a friend who goes, wow, I haven't seen you in 10 years. Tell me about what you're doing now, okay? In plain language. Um, Because really, good marketing copy is understandable writing or understandable speaking. It's plain language, okay? Um, And the other thing, last thing I'll say is as you notice your niche mates, as you visit your niche mates' websites, uh, notice how other people describe their work. Notice these seven or eight elements, okay? And notice, oh, wow, they describe it that way. That's interesting. That's something I can maybe emulate also in my description. Okay, one final thing I'll say is that these seven or eight things can also be prompts for your content. You could do a whole content piece or many content pieces just on the vision of what what's possible when clients work with you, or or the results that clients achieve when they do work with you, or the symptoms that clients uh, are are facing as they try to go towards their vision. But before they found you, what problems were they facing? You know, you could, these are all content pieces you can create. Many content pieces for each of these seven or eight areas. So start practicing. Just start talking. Just start writing. It doesn't have, and publish your website. No, seriously, do it now. This is only one version. You're going to have many versions of your websites in the future. Okay, just, you got to start somewhere. People have to start understanding at least at some level of what you do. So I hope this is helpful. Any questions, you can always comment below. And um, yeah, let me know if this is, this is beneficial. Take care.